Hello everyone and welcome back to the Battery Test Channel. On the table today I have a spread of chargers. We have um, both the Type C as well as Type A, um, the low speed and the high speed if you will, battery chargers. And I want to find out how they work with the new iPhone 13 Pro Max. Keep in mind that this has the new, uh, well it's not new, it's a larger 4350 milliamp hours or 4.350 amp hour batteries. And um, I want to find out how it works with the old school Samsung charger that we have here, other, uh, just a spread of other chargers, and what kind of volts and amps are we getting? That's the question. So what I'm going to do is plug in each one, and we're going to kind of clip through. Uh, I'm going to set, set each one up. Let's talk about the volts and amps that it goes through, and let's get started. Five watt charger. So this is five volts, one amp. All right, it's plugged in. We're going to see five volts. It goes straight up to 0.95, one amp. We are good to go. All right. Nothing, nothing more to say here. This thing will just keep on, keep on going at one amp. You have, um, let's see if we can get close, closer. 5.2 ohms and one amp. There's not much else to say. All right, on to the next one. Next up, we have the Samsung fast charger. So this is a quick charge 3.0 charger. It does not support uh, power delivery. Obviously, this is USB Type A. So this is quick charge 3.0, so it'll fast charge certain phones, but not the iPhone because it does not uh, support fast charging through quick charge. So again, we have five volts, uh, pretty good. Um, it's, it's actually overachieving on the voltage where the Apple, you saw sub five volts, this thing's hitting at 5.15, but then again, the same 0.95 amps, right about five watts. Uh, a little bit here and there, five point something ohms. We're gonna move on to this generic Aki branded, that horrible light um, USB Type A charger. Once again, five volts. This time we're getting more than one amp. Look at that, two amps. So, all right, 2.34. We're cranking at nearly the maximum capacity. So this is going to reach. Uh, this is going to charge quite a bit faster. And take a look at that. Instead of the, the 5 ohms, you now have 2.2. So twice the amps, half the resistance. So there you go. Look at this thing. This thing's putting out almost 5.3 volts at about 2.3 amps. So a little high on the voltage. Not that it matters. It's not, it's not bad. You do have a DC to DC converter taking care of the voltage. However, uh, yeah, it's interesting that it's hitting about 5.3 volts. This is some uh, this is some Milwaukee charger that came with uh, probably a flashlight, I believe. All right, so this is the last USB Type A chargers. We're now going to start with the Type C, and let's get started. Just as previously, we're going to start with the 20 watt Apple charger. The reason I didn't want to plug this in yet is because I want to show you how the voltage changes. Plug it in. You'll notice it first starts off right about five volts. 4.8 and about 1.8 amps and then boom switches to 9 volts because you have power delivery kicking in keep in mind that I now have it plugged in with a different type C type C to lightning cable there you go you have about 9 9 volts and then it's going to sit at uh, 2 point 2 point something uh, volts, uh, 2 point something amps so there you go 9 times 2 is 18 uh, plus some change you got your 20 watts and you'll notice that right there, uh, four point something ohms. So it starts off at five volts, um, ratchets up to nine or nine-ish, and then you got your 20 watts. And it's going to be the same story with the rest of them. Okay, but next up I have is the 20 watt Aki charger. And this thing's got a single PD port. Let's see how this thing goes. As usual, it's going to start off at 5 volts, 2 amps, so you have your 10 watts there, and then it says, hey, wait a minute. It negotiates with the phone and says, you can do 9 volts. All right, time to bust out the big boy, the 60 watt charger. Will this stick 60 watts down the iPhone's gullet? No, it will not. 
Same story, five volts, 1.8 amps, switches to nine or 8.5, oh, there you go. Similar story as the Samsung, kind of corrects up to nine. You have one amp, 1.3. And then the previous one, the previous Samsung charger did about 25 watts. So let's see what, what we get out of this thing. We should be getting something close to three, I'm guessing. There we go. 27 watts would be three amps. And I think the iPhone 13 Pro Max does about uh, 26. So that's what we got. Um, I'd be happier if the uh, voltage value were closer to nine. I guess 8.8 .8 will do and 2.9. So this is about the maximum, about as, so uh, 26 watts is about the maximum that I've seen. And given that the phone is at, let's see, I don't know, a low state of charge. Doesn't tell me, classic iPhone, right? So it's at a low state of charge. So this is about what we can expect. The last thing we're gonna do is we're going to hook up this thing to two chargers. Um, and I say this thing, I'm sorry. I mean the MagSafe charger. I couldn't think of the name of the darn thing. We're going to hook up the MagSafe charger to two chargers. One is the unrestricted power of the uh, 60 watt. And then we're going to hook it up to the 20 watt just for grins. And let's see what we get. I'm gonna hook it up and be right back. All right, charger's hooked up. Let's slap this puppy on and see what happens. All right, nice safe to you thing. There you go. So you heard a click and then you heard that sound, which means it is MagSafe charging versus just wireless charging. So you do have two types of uh, uh, charging there. And the MagSafe, unlike, uh, unlike regular wired charging, kind of takes its own sweet time to get up to the charging current. So we're gonna have to hang out for a little bit here. So we started off under one amp, we're at uh, nine volts, uh, still kind of climbing up to the one amp mark, and then uh, we'll, we'll give it a minute. So we have 19 watts coming out, and uh, about, so okay, so 19 watts coming out, and then 15 watts going to the phone, that gives us an efficiency of about uh, 70, 78, 79%. So yeah, that's about in the ballpark. So maybe about 15 watts, 14 watts is going to your phone. That's not bad. That's really not too bad. All right, so let's see what happens if uh, we drop it down to a 20 watt charger. All right, here we have the Apple charger. Let's hook it up. There we go. Um, given the two, the, the click and then the, the tone, you know that it's MagSafe and not just wireless charging. We have nine volts, 0. 0.6. Let's give this a minute to warm up. And in the meantime, I want to talk to you about this case. Yeah, oh, I can feel a little bit of heat. This case, this is the official Apple um, clear case. And this thing is hot garbage. Um, it's got no coverage on the bottom. So if you drop your phone and you end up hitting a ledge on the bottom, it's a goner. Uh, it's got decent coverage everywhere else. It is. All right, what have we here? So it's been, it's been about a minute. And look at that, big difference. It is not hitting two amps at all. It is sitting at 1.4. So let's see, nine times 1.4. Let's be, let's help this thing out a little bit. 12.5 watts. So big difference uh, between the higher wattage power supply. And interestingly enough, Apple actually tells you this. They do tell you that a higher wattage power supply will benefit the MagSafe charger. So there you go. If you're going to use the 20 watt Apple adapter with MagSafe, you're going to take a significant performance hit. Okay, well, I haven't busted this one out yet, but this is a 30 watt, whereas the Black Hockey was a 20 watt. Both of these are GAN chargers. Well, the result of this video, it seems to be, at least from a wireless charging perspective, get the biggest one you can find. If you have any requests, uh, let me know in the uh, the messages below. Let me know what you'd like to see if I missed anything. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one. Bye.